Hi YouTube, it's Alan Sagano, president of ADS Consulting Group, and today's topic is about Hyper-V. Hyper-V, as you know, is uh, Microsoft's uh, hyper, uh, hypervisor. Uh, it runs on, well, now Windows Server 2019. We see uh, major competitors are VMware and, and Microsoft with Hyper-V are the, the major two players in that space. We see Hyper-V get installed almost always incorrectly. What? What do you mean? So. Here's the first thing. Number one, we recommend that you install Hyper-V on Server Core. If you don't know what Server Core is, basically Server Core is a specialized installation of Windows Server where it's basically stripped of the GUI. So you just have kind of a command prompt and that's it. And there's a sconfig utility, which is kind of like an old DOS um, menu-driven kind of text-based system. But that's pretty much it. The reason why we like to install Hyper-V on Server Core is that your TAC footprint compared to the full-blown installation of Windows goes from like this down to me much smaller. So that's number one. Number two, you wanna make sure that you install Hyper-V on uh, and put the management interface on a dedicated management network that is highly protected. So a separate uh, network inter uh, NIC, uh, network interface card on a separate VLAN and make it very difficult. We recommend two-factor authentication to get into the management VLAN. Actually, we're recommending two-factor authentication everywhere now. Sorry, welcome to 2019. Um, so the other reason why you want to install Hyper-V on server core is that we also see some installs where you have the server layer, right? And instead of instantiating a VM for a domain controller and a web server and a SQL server and whatever, they'll install the, uh, a, they'll install the domain controller um, role at the same level as a hypervisor. So now your attack footprint is even bigger. That is not good. So what you should do, right, is just have Hyper-V at the host level and then any services that you want to install additionally, instantiate a VM, instantiate a VM, instantiate a VM. Some of the pushback you might get is, well, hey, Alan, I'm not very good with command prompt and then all the GUI stuff, blah, blah, blah. I get it. So what you do when you install Hyper-V on server core is you set it up for remote management. You set up a separate management server that allows you to remotely manage the Hyper-V host and pretty much not every single thing, but pretty much almost everything you can manage remotely. So you lose, you get all that GUI goodness, you get uh, the small, smaller attack footprint, and hopefully you won't make the mistake of instantiating uh, additional roles or services at the host level, instantiate those in VMs. That's the tip of the day. Hopefully you like this content. If you do, do, please, 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 boink, hit that subscribe button and uh, we'll keep making this content. Thanks for a lot for listening and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.